Okay, so the next thing we're going to show is the proximity wrap. We're going to show how it is topology independent, and we're going to show how you do not have to be at a rest state for it to bind. So here we have Sven's head, and I'm going to drive Sven's head with this cage that I have modeled. So here you can see the cage that lines up with his face, and we're going to use that to drive Sven's face. So the first thing we can do is we're going to come in here, we're going to come to the deform menu and we're going to create a proximity wrap. That creates a proximity wrap node, which we have here. Now we want to pick the geometry that we want to drive. So we want to drive this geometry and we add it here. So now that will be uh, driven by the cage. And then we want to take the cage and we want to add it as a driver. Okay, so now that that is set up, what we should be able to do, first I can show you what we've got set up on the cage. So I have a brow controller here that will move this around, okay? So now we wanna look at how that brow controller affects Finn's eyes. So now you see that it is moving his skin around. Now, not quite sure I like the, the shapes and the settings I'm getting here. So I'm going to come into this proximity shape. I'm going to select it and I'm going to set a few settings. So we only have one driver, so I'm going to reduce this just to make it uh, as fast as possible. It will help. This is the distance it's going to look for a bind. So I'm going to increase this a little bit so I can bind to a little more. I'm going to smooth the incoming influences a little bit, which cleans up the shape some. And I'm going to smooth the normals and has some soft normalization here. Okay, so now he looks a little bit better. Uh, we can see how he's moving. Now, one thing you notice is his brow's not moving. So even with him in a deformed state, I can come into this proximity node and I can select the eyebrows and I can add those as driven geometry. You'll notice it jumped into place. So now, we have a mesh that is being driven this. Now, I said it's topology independent. One thing I didn't show you earlier is if we come and look at the cage, I've actually set up this cage to have two resolutions uh, using a choice node. So you can see here is a higher resolution cage and here is the lower resolution cage. Uh, I can show you a little bit what that looks like in the node editor. Uh, we'll clear this and we'll map it. You'll see the choice nodes right here. So here you say, see there's a high resolution shape and a low resolution shape coming into a choice node. And that's driving uh, this node. So I'm easily able to use this setting to change the resolution of the, the mesh that we're using. So what I'll do is I'll come back here and with the brow control in any position I choose, I can pull it down. I have this brow and now I can come to the cage and I can switch the resolution of the cage if I need a higher resolution cage. Ah, so that higher resolution cage provided me a little better deformation. Now you see the deformation is smoother, it's cleaner. Well, what's nice about this is I can come back, I could change the incoming model of that cage and just doubling the resolution like this is just to show you how quickly it can be uh, adapted. So that shows off the proximity wrap. It shows off topology independence and it shows off um, uh, binding in a non-rest state. And again, you saw the binding in a non-rest state when I had the eyebrow. You can see the eyebrow jump on and off of this. So I could easily come in here and take the eyebrow and I can remove it from the deformation and it goes back to rest. So now it's unaffected or I can grab the eyebrow and I can add it back into the deformation. And now it's going with this. So it's a procedural node. Uh, it lets you have a lot of changes on the fly.